which means it uses the LAN and the WAN. In this case, the LAN is connected to the fiber and the WAN is connected to a separate voice only connection. The default interface is set to the LAN. So you always need to point your default interface to the internet facing interface. So by default, the PBS can have internet access for the Linkus app or firmware upgrades. So since the LAN is the default interface, the PBX doesn't know when to use the WAN. So you specifically need to tell it on the static routes what to use the WAN for. So we are using SIP on this PBX. So you want your SIP registration to happen on the WAN, on the, the voice only connection. So all you do is on the static route, you say add, you put in your SIP server IP. And in this case, it's the, it's the SIP registration range and not a single IP. So you can see the subnet is a slash 24. If it was a single SIP server IP, then you would just change your subnet to this. That's for single IPs. And this is for a slash 24 network. Put your gateway in there, which is the gateway on the WAN, and you select your WAN interface. Once saved, the PBX will use the static route and it will do SIP registration out over the WAN. Now, sometimes if your service provider uses a separate range for RTP packets, for, for the media packets, then you need to add that range in as well. If you don't add this range in, then you're only going to do SIP registration out over the WAN. But the RTP packets, the media packets, will still root on the default interface, which is the LAN, which obviously defeats the purpose of quality of service. So find out from your ISP if they use a separate range for RTP. If they do, add it in here as well. In this case, this is the, the RTP range. It's on a slash 27 network. Uses the same gateway on the WAN and you select your WAN interface. So by doing this, we have proper quality of service. We know the SIP registration and the media packets. It will all route out over the WAN 